Chronic pain is an enormous social problem in this country. Really, you could consider it to be a silent epidemic with uh, one in five Australians reporting chronic pain. And, and indeed, add all of the people involved in the lives of people suffering chronic pain, and you've got a very large number of people whose lives are affected by chronic pain. It would be fair to say that chronic pain disrupts ordinary lives tremendously. Chronic pain is quite a significant strain on family life and people report that they are unable to do the sorts of things that they would normally do. And following on, of course, from being unable to do your normal things, people suffer a loss of identity. With that loss comes grief, anger and often depression. There are many myths uh, surrounding chronic pain. One is that chronic pain is caused by psychological issues. Um, and it's my view that this widespread community belief in itself becomes another force of social isolation and indeed is a part of the problem. The fact is that chronic pain can strike at any time any one of us. We don't know how many people commit suicide, but they do. Because you're in a pain, you can't do a lot of the things that you used to be able to do. I mean, you could you could tempt them, you tempt them every day, but that just causes pain. And as silly as it feels, you just take it all for granted. What you do. Any group of twenty people is going to be at least one person. Uh, so, I'm sorry, any group of twenty people will be four persons who've got uh, persistent pain. And if each of those four persons has been associated with one other person, be it spouse or mm -hmm. um, workplace uh, mm -hmm. mate, that's eight persons. Mm -hmm. So in Australia that means eight million people mm -hmm. are affected by persistent pain. Which raises the question of isn't it extraordinary why it hasn't been recognised to date? My pain first started when I was assaulted by a patient. The, the bottom three discs shot out into my spinal cord and paralysed me instantly. The manager and, and my colleague next to me just looked at me and said, uh, with a look of, oh well, there's another pain for one of us. <laughs> go and take the Panadol. So you go and take two Panadol to get rid of the pain. I was at work, a uh, rainy day, walked up a, a metal checker plate ramp, and holding onto the handrail, my feet slipped. Uh, naturally tried to stay up, and it was a bad move. I twisted my upper back, and got back pain as a result. Dedication. Dedication to work. Work fanatic. Before the accident I was a, a workaholic. Uh, I loved to work. Really, really enjoyed my work there. Loved it. I was just driving on a Sunday with my girlfriend. Actually it was my first car ever. And we stopped at a pedestrian crossing and a car ran up the back of me. At the time, I didn't think anything of it. Um, gradually over time, I realised the consequences of what had actually happened. I just suggested to the bloke, it's something on my left shoulder here. So this isn't good. So I've never had this pain before. I've had pain, God, pain one way or another. But this is, this is a numbness. I've never felt anything like this over the years, never a thing. And that was the start of just endless pain. Before pain, I was I was cycling three to four days a week, probably five to, to ten k's a day. I used to go to the gym six days a week, four to six hours as well as um, working. Swimming, golf, table tennis in A grade. They couldn't explain it to me, and they didn't understand why I was having so much pain. I didn't really ever understand why I was experiencing the pain I was experiencing. It seemed to be more than more than just physical, and I couldn't explain why. How am I going to live with this? I cannot live like this. I was someone that used to go to the gym. I was someone that used to go hell for leather on a horse. Now here I am, almost housebound. I was on this merry-go-round of seeing doctors and psychologists and physiotherapists and massages that weren't fixing anything and weren't giving me any answers to, to what was going on. 
there's no place actually in the biomedical way of looking at the world for persistent pain. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the diagnosis, so to speak, is just based on what somebody tells you is the problem. And often you don't have the usual clinical features on the clinical examination or the investigations which so-called so objectify the problem. And like there's no cancer, there's no growth, there's no nothing, it's just pain that I have to live with. I think society sees people with pain in a number of different ways. Um, I guess with my car accident side of things people could see I had a physical injury and they could appreciate that I was in pain. My initial back injury that I had, people couldn't see it. I had it, I felt it, and it limited what I could do, but people reacted to me in different ways from yes we understand through to you're just faking it to get out of work. I felt like I was made to be a liar. And so people with chronic pain have been described by this, um, this uh, writer as exiles. Um, and it says, I'll quote, they're exiles, and this is people with chronic pain, they're exiles and strangers in a land of social identities. And people with chronic disease can identify themselves as diabetics or arthritics, but chronic pain does not allow this sort of fusion of identity and diagnosis in any Western language. And so this causes delegitimation and gives shameful meaning to the condition, emphasizing patients as real social monsters. Their affliction is not visible, but they claim that they're sick. Consequently, they're regarded as fraudulent, faking to medical and social security personnel, and being stuck up and dishonest, not worthy of trust. But then you've got to explain to people, don't put too much in the shopping bag because I can't lift more than two kilos. And they look at you and then you've got to explain, I did me negative. And the disc discrimination comes from, oh, he's a winter. Look at the size of him. He's a winter. He's a sook. Now, I was living with this pain and knew that it was real, but I was in a position where I had to justify myself all the time. I felt in the depths, opposite depths of the sphere, like from my hips just above water, treading and just, you know. Suicide is, is very real to me. I didn't experience it initially with my, my back injuries, but after the motor vehicle accident, yeah, it, it became very real. Uh, my wife and my family, they're not stupid. I was just very good at hiding it. And so that, 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 um, that need for validation, for to be taken seriously, even though there's no, there may be no obvious problem, I think, is something we, we wrestle with clinically every day. I had a the three week um, pain program and then follow up pain management but it kind of just stopped and there was no, I didn't know where to go. There was a lot of stress initially, I didn't know what direction to head, I didn't know who to talk to, I didn't know where to go to find information. It would have been useful um, at the start for somebody to know, um, to, to, to let somebody know in my condition of what's ahead, what you have to do, who you have to talk to, what has to happen, because everything you did, came from, spoke to, was insurance side. Um, I wouldn't have a clue where to go to. I would have loved to have someone to talk to at the start. And that uncertainty initially played a big part in the, the increasing pain. There was no, like on the internet, there's, there was nothing I was aware of that I could contact or, Look, I'm in a sticky spot here, where do I go from here? There's just, I find there's very little resources out there. And there has been a need, a, a, a gaping need in Australian society for a consumer-led group to advocate on behalf of people with chronic pain in particular. the biggest breakthrough in my pain experience was the fact that there was somebody I was referred to that was able to explain to me why I was feeling what I was feeling. I had little understanding as to why. Yes, I had physical pain. And I knew when I twisted a certain way my back hurt, but I couldn't explain why I was feeling that pain. 
uh, physio tried to explain it from a muscular side of, of things, but there are other parts to it as well. And having that person come into my experience changed my whole outlook on, on what I was experiencing. Living with chronic pain and not having any support, not knowing what direction to go in, because you know, chronic pain, it's no longer acute, it, it turns into chronic. There's multiple different types of pain, not, not one person will experience exactly what another person experiences. It's not like diabetes where you've got type 1 or type 2, there, there's a whole range of pain. And why doesn't it rate with diabetes, with arthritis, with uh, heart disease? as a major problem. Look at the cost to the community in terms of lost productivity, to use the politician's term, and in cost of personal suffering is immense, and it eclipses uh, the diabetes and these others. But I think a peak body can bring people to a central point where they can find the direction they need to go and, and start their journey in that sort of direction. No matter how far you're down, there's always a way up and it's a case of getting the things you need to, to build the ladder to get yourself back up.